How did Botswana become so rich? Despite Africa's overall economic underdevelopment, some countries have achieved relatively high levels of economic growth and prosperity. Botswana is one of them. Botswana is in the heart of Southern Africa, sandwiched between South Africa, Namibia, Zambia and Zimbabwe. It shares a single border crossing with Zambia in the northeast. It covers 220,000 square miles, roughly the size of France, Kenya or Texas. Botswana is endowed with two great fortunes, vast diamond deposits, as well as a large expanse of wilderness where big cats roam free. Botswana is home to a plethora of wildlife, including the largest population of elephants on the planet. For more than three decades after getting independence in 1966, this country has been one of the world's most impressive success stories in terms of development. Significant mineral wealth, good governance, prudent economic management and a relatively small population of slightly more than 2 million have elevated it to an upper middle income country with a transformation agenda of becoming a high income country by 2036. Botswana has had the highest rate of per capita growth of any country in the world over the last 35 years. Botswana has been praised by the African Development Bank for sustaining one of the world's longest economic booms. This occurred despite many diverse initial conditions including low investments during the colonial period and high inequality. Botswana achieved this rapid development by pursuing conventional economic policies. It's a mystery how Botswana managed to implement these policies because good economics is usually bad politics in Africa. That is why almost everyone agrees that Botswana's spectacular growth performance is due to good policies. Botswana has a PPP adjusted income per capita of $5,796 in 1998 nearly four times the African average, and it grew at a 7.7% annual rate between 1965 and 1998. In the late 1960s, Botswana was one of the poorest countries in the world, with a GDP per capita of about 70 US dollars per year. It has transformed into an upper middle income country with one of the world's fastest growing economies. The economy is driven primarily by mining, livestock and tourism. In 2020, Botswana's per capita gross domestic product was estimated at $6,525.51 US dollars. Botswana's GDP per capita is equivalent to 52% of the global average. According to data from the World Bank, Botswana had the world's highest annual growth rate in the per capita income from 1965 to 1999 at over 7%. As a direct consequence, the average real income in Sub-Saharan Africa decreased over 35 years. Botswana's GDP grew by 10.6% and exports 10.5% annually. From 1965 to the same 1999, manufacturing exports grew at a rate of more than 16% per year. Employment of Botswana in South Africa declined to a small percentage of the labor force after 1980, when employment growth in the modern sector peaked at about 7.5% per year. In recent years, the country's foreign exchange reserves have exceeded two years' imports, making external debts negligible. It was in 1965 that Botswana's per capita income was about 60% Africa and 10% global average. In 1999, Botswana had a per capita income that was 60% higher than the global average and six times greater than that of the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa. The largest crop of diamond discoveries in the last century was discovered in Botswana. When the Dubies announced in 1969 that significant diamond bearing rock formations had been discovered at Orapa, a diamond producer. Botswana's mineral wealth was effectively managed and not squandered during the administrations of Seretse Kama and Kitumile Maziri, the country's first two presidents. The pair prioritized development above all else, using international development aid and rising diamond revenues. They made substantial investments in social services such as education and health. Any competent observer of development is aware that the presence of mineral wealth is insufficient to ensure broader economic success. Indeed, the political and economic challenges of managing mineral wealth frequently lead mineral-rich nations to abandon their mineral resources. Nigeria and Venezuela are contemporary examples of countries experiencing severe economic, political, and social difficulties. Botswana's non-mining economy has grown by more than 10% per year, a rate that would have been the highest in the world. Botswana is the biggest largest supplier of rough diamonds. However, 
Debswana, Botswana's diamond mining partnership with the BS, transfers more than 75% of its profits to the Botswana government and now owns approximately 15% of the BS. Due to Botswana's reliance on diamonds, global demand must be robust for the economy to thrive. Exports of diamonds provide Botswana's economy with substantial amounts of foreign currency and have served as a foundation for industrial growth and have stimulated infrastructure improvements. The government of Botswana has identified tourism as a sector that could help diversify the economy from its dependence on commodities. Botswana's GDP grew from 6.3% in 2000 to 13.1% in 2019. In Botswana, 8.9% of all jobs were linked to travel and tourism in 2019. The country's game reserves, wildlife and wilderness are the primary draws for tourists. Botswana is endowed with a wealth of enticing natural beauty. When you arrive in Gaborone, Botswana's capital, you see this for yourself. The city streets are spotless and well kept, the traffic, when there is any, moves smoothly, and the city's modern glass buildings gleam against the frequently blue sky. As a result, Botswana has earned a reputation as one of the world's most special and one-of-a-kind travel destinations. More than 70% of Botswana is desert, making it an ideal place for wildlife to roam free. Botswana is one of the most popular safari destinations in Africa because of its wide range of wildlife. Tourism's contribution to the global economy in 2019 was nearly $9 trillion, making it roughly three times as large as agriculture. Small and medium-sized businesses, which account for the majority of the tourism industry suppliers and intermediaries, have historically had poor communication and coordination among themselves. Limited oversight and light touch management have been the norm for government involvement in the industry. For perhaps the first time in history, COVID-19 has thrown the tourism industry into disarray. A 60-80% to drop in the international arrivals was indeed expected in 2020, and tourism spending won't reach pre-crisis levels until 2024, as many as 120 million jobs are at risk as a result of this. For Botswana to be successful and wealthy, it must have adopted good policies, rapid accumulation, investment and socially efficient exploitation of resources, rents have resulted from these developments. Good policies may have been chosen in Botswana because the country had well-established institutions, such as institutions of private property. The fact that private property institutions only exist in Botswana and not in other African countries suggests that there are a variety of factors that are at play. Botswana's political elites were restrained by inclusive pre-colonial institutions. Also, the effect of British colonialism on Botswana was limited and did not destroy these institutions. It was in the elites' best interest to maintain and strengthen private property institutions following independence. Botswana's wealth in diamonds made it impossible for any group to risk rocking the boat by challenging the status quo. Finally, we stress that post-independence leaders, particularly Presidents Kama and Maziri, made several critical decisions that impacted the situation. Botswana's success is also closely tied to the country's strong political and economic institutions, which have elevated the sub-Saharan country to the top of the region's wealth and prosperity rankings. The economy of Botswana is one of the most liberated in all of Africa. It has a sane legal system and a national and rational regulatory environment. As a result, trade and investment are made easier and more attractive to foreign investors. Furthermore, trade barriers are low and successive governments have managed to keep public finances in check. Botswana's lack of exchange controls, stable currency and outperforming stock market has drawn a slew of international investors seeking higher returns. Immediately following independence, the Botswana Democratic Party was successful in establishing strong institutions that contributed to the achievement of political stability and long-term economic growth. Botswana is a consolidated democracy that has held free elections since 1966. Botswana is ranked as the least corrupt country in Africa according to the Corruption Perception Index. Institutions, on the other hand, are not immutable. They can be undermined if civil society does not hold governments accountable for their actions. However, despite massive government investments in agriculture and rural development, cattle ownership continues to be a major source of rural wealth and rural aspirations. Regrettably, agricultural development has been a major disappointment. Annual expenditures by the Ministry of Agriculture amounted to more than 60% of the total value added in agriculture by the late 1990s. Other factors to be concerned about 
include economic inequalities, unemployment among school leavers, the extremely high rate of HIV and AIDS infections, and the high cost of military defense. A high prevalence of HIV and AIDS results in a shrinking workforce and presents challenges for employers, who must provide healthcare and death benefits to their employees. Because more affluent individuals and families are better equipped to pay for healthcare expenses and financially cope with the loss of a family member than an impoverished family, the wealth gap in Botswana is widening as a result of this issue.